Hey guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a book review for The Last Letter by Rebecca Yarrow. So this was sent to me from Entangled Publishing, so I am very excited that they sent me this book. They sent this to me for free in exchange for an honest review. I will preface that all opinions are my own. I never let a free book sway my opinion, and so I'm here to let you know about this book. I wanted to do a book review because I've been hearing a lot of hype about this book recently. I love Rebecca Yarrow's. I read Wilder last year, almost exactly a year ago, right before I met her at a polycon. I'm gonna see her again this year, and this one is a military romance, and I know Rebecca Yaros, her husband was in the military. I believe he just recently got out, or he's almost out. She did a whole blog post about the reason why he is not in the military anymore, and so I stumbled upon that when she was posting about it on her Instagram, and she exchanged letters with her husband all while he was deployed. She did a whole blog post about it, I believe, and there was an Instagram photo I saw, so she is knows a lot about military life and so this book is about a man who is in the military and he writes letters to his best friend's sister and his best friend serves with him and his sister is a single mom of twins and she is 25. So going into this I loved the fact that the main character was 25 years old just like myself and acted so much older. To me, in my life, I always felt more mature priority-wise to my companions, like in college and stuff. I hated going out. I don't drink. I don't swear. I'm very career-oriented and I am very dedicated to everything I do. So like my blog, my YouTube, I'm very serious about all of that. I have an Etsy shop, so I focus primarily on bettering my own life and there's a lot of books though that I can't really relate to the main character and so the fact that our main character is a single mom and she runs her own business I loved her so much she had so much on her plate and she was so dedicated to caring for her kids and caring for her business and so I really loved that we had a younger character who took life really seriously so I loved her character from the start and what happens in this book is the whole premise it's on the back of the book I just checked is that her brother actually passed away while on duty and his last letter which is what this this book is titled is asking his best friend to go home and take care of his sister and her children so he does he gets out of the military on an ab a leave of absence and goes and takes care of his best friend's sister obviously romance ensues she was kind of falling in love with him in their letters and so before each chapter we get a letter between the two of them either from her or from him and they are all interspersed throughout a different order than how they were written so we might have letter two to letter ten to letter five and they correspond to what's going on in their lives right now which I thought was really fun. I really liked seeing their romance grow to their romance growing now. And she has to open up to him and she doesn't want to because she's already lost her brother, who was her best friend. And she is broken because of it and she really doesn't want to open up herself to anybody again, especially what happened with her ex-husband, who is the father of her children. And I will say I loved the kids so much. Maisie and Colton, they, he goes by Colt, are adorable. They, they're so cute. And our main character, I don't want to spoil anything, though we learned something pretty early on about one of her kids. It's a huge part of this book, but it doesn't say it on the back, so I'm not going to say what it is. Um, but her children are hilarious and become a huge priority for Beckett when he is watching over her because he wants to help out with them and he's already grown in love with the kids based on the letters that he wrote with her but she can't know it because she doesn't know who he is and so the kids were some of my favorite characters I really loved how they interacted they were twins like I've said a lot I'm a twin so I really love the close bond that her children have she does have a boy and a girl like I said Maisie and Colt and they're really close together and it's really adorable watching them learn how to have a father because they've literally grown up with no father. That is in no way Ella's fault, our main character. Um, it was definitely the ex-husband's fault. When I first started reading this, many people told me to have the tissues ready. This is a very, very sad book. We do get some discussion of what happened to her brother when he passed away and what happened with Beckett while he was in the military. So if you have an issue with that and like PTSD of military trauma, don't read this book because we do get that detail from him. But I really enjoyed this book so much. I cried. I did cry when I read this book. I wasn't really crying as I was reading it and then the end hit and then like I sat there thinking about it and I couldn't hold back the tears. It was it was heart-wrenching. I will tell you, you're going to cry when you read this book. 
and I don't ever cry in books. This one, I just like, I couldn't stop it. It was just really hard. I feel like I'm gonna start crying right now. It was a very heart-wrenching book, but in the best way possible. Like, it's a sad, it was a sad cry. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened. But sometimes you need a good cry in books, and I love military romances. There's something about them that I just love, and so this one really hit the spot for me. It is kind of like a Nicholas Sparks book. Like, when I started reading it, I was like, this is totally like Dear John. It also reminded me a lot of The Lucky One. Like, if you love Nicholas Sparks books, because they give you a good cry too, and they're about military romances, you would love this book. I was just blown away by the writing, by like, there were certain lines in this book that made me cry. So I think Rebecca Yeros hit it out of the park with this book. I gave it five out of five stars. If you really want an emotional military romance, you have to read it. I immediately went on to Instagram and asked for military romance recommendations and I got some that I've already owned. So I'm hopefully gonna do a military romance recommendation video once I read a few more. This book's definitely gonna be in it and I just can't rave about this anymore. There is a little bit of a lull in the middle and I was kind of annoyed with it, but not because I started thinking about it and I was like this is just like a realistic relationship time's gonna pass and nothing's gonna really change in a relationship until something happens so we do jump six months at one part and then we do jump another six months in a different part and I just reminded myself that's the reality of a relationship there's not gonna be a ton of drama within like the first month and then the book's over like the story's over it it was really good it was really realistic and I ended up loving it and the ending picked up again so I could not recommend this enough. The sun is like blinding me right now. I apologize. That sun just came out of nowhere. But definitely recommend this. Five out of five stars. You need to read it. And that is my review of The Last Letter by Rebecca Yeros. Let me know down below if you've read it or if you want to read it. Also leave me some military romance recommendations. I would love to hear. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.